Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to episode 83 of the Mind and Muse Crafts Podcast. I am your host Caroline. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back. It is incredible how almost half of this year has gone by already. I have uploaded this year, well, I have recorded and uploaded 10 episodes of this podcast this year, and also I was able to record two tutorials for my crochet earrings, which was something new for me because I had never done that before. And so I am trying also to maintain my commitment to upload two episodes a month on the 15th and on the 30th. And it's been a struggle, but I am trying to do that. For those of you that are new here, I've come here for the first time, I normally podcast or I normally record from my home in Puerto Rico, but for this half of the year 2022, I have been traveling to my son's house to help with the care of his first child. And since the baby was born at 24 weeks instead of the normal 40, I guess, um, in case you didn't know that, um, he needed special care. He was in the NICU for five months. And when he went home, he still had to have special equipment and oxygen and whatnot. So I have been traveling back and forth to help out with his care. And on this occasion, I should have traveled home next week, but I decided to extend my stay for two additional weeks until the baby um, becomes one year old. And um, not that that means anything particular in his development, but it's just that um, at that point, I think I'll go home and continue, you know, with my normal life, so to say, and feel that I have at least given it a try and given these kids a hand to, um, and obviously, especially give a hand to my grandson at this delicate moment in his life. And hopefully he'll be, he'll continue to progress and um, I might not see myself returning with this motive Right? I might return for a visit, but not necessarily to give a hand with child care. So, as you can imagine from some of the previous episodes where I have been in my son's home, um, there's not always a lot of crafting or crocheting done. On this particular occasion, I mentioned the last time that I had only brought with me several skeins of what's called Nubu yarn, which is the collection of, which is one of the ranges in the collection of Boo yarns that Lion Brand produces. They have their True Boo, they have their Kobu, and they've got Nubu. And I don't know what order they came out, but Kobu is their 50% cotton, 50% bamboo, and Trubu is their 100% bamboo. These are both more or less decay weights, and the Nubu is what they call 100% lyocell, even though it is based on, um, it's a synthetic yarn based on bamboo, but it goes through a different process than Trubu, and the yarn it creates, the synthetic yarn that is created, is called lyocell. And I went through with you the last time the different um, characteristics 
of this yarn. And now I am able to share with you my experience with this yarn um, by showing you my finished make. The episode is titled Adding Crochet to Fabric because in this occasion I decided to crochet the, I would say, a little bit more than just the collar, maybe the, the upper chest and the back and attach that fabric, that piece, to a regular fabric. And I will put up a video here so you can understand a little bit more uh, about what I'm talking about by actually seeing it in a dedicated video. Let me just mention then that the earrings that I am wearing as part of my outfit today are not handmade by me. They are handmade, but not by me. I purchased these earrings, these earrings from a Instagrammer. The account is called Catharsis Crochet. Catharsis Crochet, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. And... Um, they are handmade by the owner of the account, and I purchased them. I purchased them, and I received them in my home. The owner of the account is also a Puerto Rican woman, so it's a small business for a Puerto Rican woman. And um, so she shipped to my home in Puerto Rico, but she also ships to uh, mainland USA, I believe. I don't know if she ships outside of the US, but these are the tree of life. The earrings are made to represent the tree of life. And I've always been a fan of that symbol. Maybe I could call it a symbol. And I really wanted to have them in crochet. I have them in metal. I have the tree of life in metal. I think I have a couple of versions in metal. And I also wanted to have them in crochet. And so I saw them, I didn't make them, but I liked them. So they were shipped to my home. That is Catharsis Crochet, in case you wanna look into her account and see what other gorgeous earrings she has there. And I am pairing it with the top, the top part of the top that I believe came out today by Clarissa Bit of Crochet Cakes. And the top was named Philalery. I'll also put that at the bottom of the screen in case it's a word that you haven't heard very often. If it's a word that is more from Old English than from our, the current version of our English. Not sure, let me check. Um, they define it as a showy article of dress. A fancy ornament, especially in a dress. So um, that's what she called it. She called this philalery because she, it's, to me specifically, the word matches because I have used it as a fancy ornament for my top. Now, let me go a little bit into what I did here because it is a small project, but I really did learn a lot from it. So I made the, the yoke, and so I did the yoke and part of the back because I wanted something that I could work up quicker than the whole blouse. And I wasn't sure that this yarn would actually be cool enough to wear it in the summer. So I decided to only make the yoke and the back and attach it to 
Actually, I started out thinking that I wanted to attach it to fabric, but then I decided that I was going to go and thrift and thrift a very inexpensive blouse and add it to the inexpensive blouse, which is what I did. Now, the blouse cost me a couple of dollars and I exchanged, I turned it around so my back was actually the front of the blouse and my front was actually the back because Clarissa Beth's Philallery has buttons on the back and I'll put up a picture here of the original design and um, so this blouse had buttons on the front. I wanted to keep those buttons at the back so maybe I wouldn't have to add buttons. I wouldn't have to add her open back that finishes in a button at the top. And so, yeah, I played around with it. If you asked me if I were to do it again, I would not have done it that way. If I were to do it again, I would have done her complete back and her complete yoke upper back and yoke and added that cut off the buttons on this blouse also or just obviously purchased a blouse that didn't have that you could just cut the fabric and not um worry about buttons i this is a medium blouse and i did the number two which is considered a medium size but i think i would have chosen a larger if i would have found it I would have chosen a larger top. Um, I was with my son and my daughter-in-law and the baby that day, so it was going to be a quick stop to pick up something, and I didn't want to prolong and, and do all my... I usually go to a thrift store to do inventory, my husband says, and so I didn't want that to happen, so... I went in quickly and then gave a look through and just chose the first top that, well, actually I chose several of them and then ended up choosing the top that I thought would go best in terms of the color with this chocolatey color, even if, in case it isn't coming out well. And so, yeah, I thought the top that I chose turned out to be pretty nice because of the fact that it's got that little vintage look to it, because it's got the small flowers, and it's also in a tone of brown, and I really like that. Now, I wanted to not have to wear another blouse under it, but I do believe that it is a combination of cotton and elastic, so it is, has a high percentage of cotton. It is also a lucky brand blouse. So Lucky Brand, for the summer at least, tend to make blouses that I like a lot because they are in lightweight fabrics and um, that it, they are actually very good for using in the summer. However, this one was long sleeve, so I had to cut the sleeves off and I also had to cut out the top. And um, yeah, I'll put in a little video here where I show you the top in full and I'll show you how I cut the pieces off from what I stayed with in the end to create this my version of this philallery top. So as you could see in the video, I removed the long sleeves. I obviously didn't want long sleeves because I wanted to be for the summer. Um, my sleeves, however, are not identical to the sleeves in Clarissa's version, in the original version, because she does one, she does one repeat of the lace. And I wanted to do two because I wanted my sleeve to be a little bit longer. You guys know that I've told you several times that I'm not a big fan of showing off my arms. So she has a version that is sleeveless, but I 
I wanted, I wanted sleeves. But I wanted them to be holy enough so that they would be a little bit cooler in the summertime. And so that I would say would be the only change that I made. Let's see, I had to use a 3.5 millimeter hook. Not too sure if she does or not, but this Nubu yarn is actually worsted. And I know that she did not use a worsted yarn for her project. So I knew that even though I was going to do the second size, it was going to be a bit bigger. If you'll notice her version, mine kind of falls off the shoulders more than her does. Well, number one, because she did the size one, I did the size two. But also because even though I was doing size two, mine is a bit larger than the actual size two, the actual measurements for the size two in her pattern because of the fact that I'm using a worsted weight yarn. So I went down to a 3.5 millimeter hook because I, I went down actually to the smallest size I thought I could use without having problems with the yarn. Because it's a worsen, because it's not plied, this yarn tends to be very splitty. So you really can't work up a speed with it because you have to check each time that you are actually pulling through. And I think it has about eight strands, eight strands of yarn. So they're not plied together. Very easily you could pull through, especially since if you're using a smaller hook than the one that's recommended. They recommend here a 5.5 a 5.5 millimeter hook, you know, the recommendations that they give on the back, you won't be able to see that, just take my word for it. So um, I was using the 3.5. So yes, I had to go slowly because if not, I would catch on one of the strands and pull them through. And I'm pretty sure that I still have, let's see, I'm pretty sure that I have some of the strands that are actually, this that you see here is, um, I have woven in my edges, but what you're seeing here is um, clipped edge, a clipped end that wants to go back in through. So I'm going to have to do something else with that. That is not a, a defect of the blouse. It's simply an edge that has slipped through the holes here. Um... Okay, things that I learned. I had added fabric to crochet before, but I wanted to make sure that my work was neat and that I was doing was correct by means of other people that do this very frequently. So I looked up a couple of videos on YouTube and I found two ways that I, I could add fabric to my crochet that actually pleased my eye. That, that looked that looks neat. So I'll put up that put that down in the description box below so you can go and check out those links if you would like to. But in the meantime, I think I will also show you here um, how I actually added the fabric because I made a short video um, while I was working up the sleeves, not the front. The front part I did definitely, but the, the method that I liked the best was the method that I used for the sleeves, and I did record uh, a little bits of me adding um, the fabric to the sleeve, and then I'll share that with you now so that you can see it firsthand. So I wanted to add stitches to the fabric underneath my armhole here as I've got crochet at the top but I don't have at the bottom and so I began by inserting a needle here wrapping the thread around the needle and then pulling it through. The next time I've pulled it through and I want to place my needle back in the same loop, but not in the same hole. So 
just trying not to get the needle in the exact same hole and then move forward about a bit trying to create always well a change that's the same size it's not always possible i'm using the same yarn that i have been crocheting the collar with so that's the nubu lyocell yarn from lion brand notice i'm just pulling it and making sure my loop forms not pulling it too tight because i'm going to later on work back into these as i come around so once again i go back into the loop not in the same hole but in the loop go down go a bit forward always trying to leave here about some distance from the edge and then making sure this that my thread that is coming from my last loop goes around my needle towards the back and then I pull it through using my thumb to keep that loop in place. So once I picked up the stitches for the fabric part of my armhole, then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join my yarn at the corner and go into each one of these chains, but I guess we could call this the back loop only. And in this case, the pattern asks for an extended double crochet, so that's what I'm going to do. And again, this is going to be my sleeve. I don't want any pulling going on, so I'm not going to add an extreme amount of tension to my crochet. But hopefully because of the way we've done this, I will be able to, I mean, it will be sturdy and it will support my crochet and the use of the garment as the armhole moves around as I wear the garment. So I thought that was really neat. It worked very well. Picking up the slip stitches with a needle and then working into those slip stitches turned out to be the neatest way that I could add um, fabric to my crochet. I really liked it a lot. I found it sturdy and I found it neat. Like when I look on the inside of this, I don't see a mess. Like I see here, I have to admit that the front part of it, I'm very tempted to take out the stitches and reconnect it using that method because I liked it much better. So the I do have edges at the front that I have not sewn in because just in case I decide to redo this, to redo the front so that it's neat, especially when I wash it, I left them. But everything else has been woven in, including that little piece that's sticking out there. Sorry about that. I know maybe I should cover it up because if not, you'll be looking at that during our whole conversation. But um, like I was saying, I did not want to have to wear a blouse under it, but it's very open at the top. So what I have under it is a bralette um, that I purchased at, I believe, Marshall's. And it was also on clearance for a couple of dollars. It was an extra small. So it is made in jean material. And I thought that that was great because it's 
thicker than the bra, so it doesn't look as annoying as the bra straps. At the same time, I don't have to wear a full blouse because it serves the purpose of an undergarment. And actually, bralettes, if you know them, they kind of like really pull your breast in. So the blouse is actually more comfortable than it was when I put on one of my regular bras. So I'm very happy with that. Very happy with that purchase, and I like the feel of it. I still haven't gone outside. I'll be um, truthful in that sense. Basically, the reason that I'm not outside today is because I'm on baby watch. I'm watching the baby while he sleeps, and if I were to go outside, I probably wouldn't hear him. And we do have cameras, but they are somewhere else. And so... Um, I wasn't going to be able to take them with me outside. But I would have liked, I would have liked once again to um, record outside because I really liked the way it looked the last time we were together, but that's okay. Because that's about what I need to share with you today um, about how I chose to only make the top part and then attach it to fabric. I think that's a really neat trick if, first of all, I could detach this without much trouble and add it to a different fabric if something would happen with this fabric. I could say it got stained or it got broken or it got eaten by moths, which is my my fear when I get back home. So I could do that. I could say the top could be saved and I could add a different piece of fabric to the bottom. And I like that idea. And um, second of all, just the idea of a summer garment totally in crochet. Normally you do have to work it up in a very thin yarn in order for it to be a little airy, but not be totally see-through. And so it's a big yarn and a small hook, and that was gonna take me more time than if I just made this one. So what I have left for you is I want to share with you some of the outings that I have been on while I've been here. And I am going to go check on the baby. So I want you to meet Lucas. He just got up from his nap. Where's Lucas? Where's Lucas? Say hello, Lucas. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> Something he still doesn't do. Yeah, but he does smile. Are you going to smile for the camera? Yes, he is, because he's a happy baby after he has a nice nap. Oh, are you still tired? You want to say something? What words do you say? Papa, 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 Mama. 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 <laughs> he's a silent baby. He's still, he's still reading his surroundings. <laughs> he's not totally turned on. Hi, Lucas. Say bye. Okay, so I've got my little buddy next to me, and he is looking at me and wondering why I'm talking at this camera, but I am going to give it a try. Uh, as I was saying, we are going to visit the beach area of Alabama this weekend. It's... um about five or some hours away and um, I want a project that I can work on so I'm looking up tank tops and the tank top that I found one of the tank tops that I found is called the arcane top and this is a free pattern from yarnthrift.com and um, it called me because it is worked in 
vertical front loop only. So it's got like lines going up and down it. And um, it is done in worsted weight lines. So I am going to give that one a try on the way on our trip and see how it turns out. And I'll let you know about that the next time. In addition to working with that, in addition to working with that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I have been doing here on my so-called vacation, at least on the weekends when, well, I'm never child free. I'm with this child 24 seven and his parents, but um, my son does try to take us on outings that will kind of like show me specifically the area. And um, so we went out to Gatlinburg in Tennessee and um, we've done outings like that. This one, this particular, and we've also went last weekend maybe? I don't remember what it was, but he also took me to visit um, caverns here in Alabama. They are called the Cathedral Caverns. And let me tell you, it was the most precious collection of rock formations, natural rock formations that I have seen in my lifetime. And you guys know that I just turned 60, so that is not that's saying a lot, I think. We have caverns on the island of Puerto Rico. We have visited them also. But this totally, totally impressed me. We did a one hour tour through the caverns and um, we had a tour guide, of course, and he did um, explain the, the most popular features, let's say, of the cavern. And um, my little buddy here, my little buddy here was not happy with the trip. He did not like being in the dark, underground, and he was just upset the whole time. So we really didn't get to hear everything that we wanted to hear. Maybe when he's a bit bigger and takes it better, or if my husband comes down with me or my daughter, then I can redo that trip and um, get the most out of it because I really, really enjoyed it. So I wanted to share with you here a little bit of footage that I took within the cave and, and show you why I was just so totally in awe with what nature has done in this cavern. The first feature most people notice about the cavern is its massive entrance. That huge opening measures about 126 feet wide and 25 feet high. But this grand entrance is only the beginning because inside the cavern, as I said, there are some of the most beautiful rock formations that Mother Nature has ever created. For example, this first one is called Goliath, and it is one of the largest stalagmites in the world, measuring 45 feet tall and 245 feet in circumference. The cathedral caverns we found had many other features, such as here you'll see a caveman, that is perched atop a flowstone wall. In addition, you can see a frozen waterfall that is just a beautiful sight in itself. You can see several stalagmite forests, or I even thought they were several stalagmite villages within the cave the caverns. And even some very improbable stone formations. For example, there's a stalagmite that is 27 feet tall and three inches wide.
Okay, I'm gonna need this little feller to finish up for me. To help me finish up this recording because if not, I won't get it up in time and I really wanna get it out for you. I uh, will put in the description box below several, well, several links to what I believe are some really great virtual tours that they have online uh, of this cabin where you can see some of the sites that I mentioned and many others and just see for yourself if it's somewhere that you would ever like to be if you're in this area. Um, so hopefully I will have some footage for you of our visit to this weekend to the beach and um, I'll share that with you next time that I meet up with you. So I'm going to call it short for today as my grandma duties are calling me. And um, I hope you all are taking care of yourselves. And I hope you're finding time for crafting, maybe more time than I'm being able to find. And hopefully we'll meet up again soon. Mm. I go back to my home on the 20th of August. So if there will be a recording on the 15th, it will have to be also um, here. So I'll get back to you on that. Uh, hopefully there will be better conditions where I can give you my full and undivided attention. So take care of yourselves. God bless you all. Until we meet again, keep yourself safe, keep yourself happy, and keep crafting. <laughs>